Welcome to today's Novage webinar, where 3D design helps you bring your 3D creation to reality. 3D design, the premier CAD jewelry design software, just dropped its latest update, version 12. This webinar will go over the newest features and show you how to elevate your design experience with next generation live rendering technology and robust stability. If you want to be impressed by the quality of the rendering and display, this is the webinar for you. Today's webinar presenter, Doug Kearns, started his jewelry career over 30 years ago, focusing much of the design work using early design software called Digital Goldsmith, if any of you remember. And Digital Goldsmith went on to be another highly recognized 3D software in the jewelry space. Doug has helped both retail and manufactured jewelers use CAD CAM technology to change the way they do business and become more profitable. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Novedge and uh, where to find 3D Design Pro. This is our um, catalog page. Uh, just um, come to novedge.com and uh, search for 3D Design Pro. And you can see, you can ask for a quote, you can uh, contact at any time. Noveg is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster service, and with zero headaches. So check us out at noveg.com. Now I will share that screen so it can razzle dazzle you with the latest V12. Take it away, right. Doug. Thank you. Can you see it okay? So we can see you perfectly. Awesome. Well, today I'm going to focus on um, our latest version, V12. Um, it was released about 30 days ago and uh, took about 18 months for the development. Um, 3Design has been in the market really since about 1999, so one of the first and early adapters to jewelry design software. Um, in the next 45 minutes to an hour, I'm going to walk you through um, some basic jewelry design uh, aspects of how 3Design can work for you and your business, give you kind of a brief overview of the interface, and then we're going to focus on really four areas within the software so that you can see 3Design uh, in action and hopefully be able to see something in here that you know can help help your business. So this is the interface. Um, it's real straightforward. This little button here takes us out to our uh, uh, to our help desk. If you want to go out to the forum, you know any particular part you want to ask questions, it takes you out to our video training library and all the things that you need to get started with that. Uh, this next button open over allows me to open an existing document. So anything that I've created, I can go out and reload anytime that I want. And then this button here allows me to open up a new canvas, which I'll show you here in, in just a second. When you look down here across the bottom, these are the last six projects that I personally was working on. So rather than coming up here and trying to find something, if I've closed up my computer, take it home, go go get a cup of coffee, I wanna take the computer with me, I don't have to come up here and find uh, my last objects. They're down here, all those different designs. So I'll just double click on this one here and we'll go ahead and open this up so you can see what the design looks like um, on the screen. So as was mentioned, uh, one of the big uh, updates here of late, uh, we did add a new viewport rendering software uh, to the uh, product. Um, you can control a lot of the aspects of this um, by simply you know, setting up your own environments. Uh, we can do animations, we can do renderings, anything that you would need to do uh, to help to market your store. Uh, can be done within here as well. I'm having to drop a little prop on here so you can see we've got a whole prop library in here as well. Um, what I'm going to be focusing on today um, is this button right here. This is going to be our jewelry tools. So we are jewelry specific. Um, unlike a lot of the other engineering based softwares out there, uh, we do come with a complete robust tools of 
uh, for jewelry. So it allows you to think like a jeweler in millimeters and percentages as compared to trying to you know, engineer the whole process as you're going through it. I'll talk a little bit about the solids menu. If uh, you've looked at any CAD software at all, uh, most of them are what they call NURBS modeling, where they start off, we start off with a curve and you add a closed curve to it. Then you connect those dots and it makes a surface. And I'll show you some of the tools within here. Um, over here is going to be our history tree. So we talk, uh, the buzzword in the industry for a long time has been parametric history. Uh, parametric means that as I go through and I make a particular design, it's keeping track of those steps that I'm doing. So at any particular time, I want to come back and make changes uh, to the um, to the design. I can do so by just simply opening up that file, going back in and making my adjustments. Uh, let's just go ahead. I'm going to open up a new file here and get rid of this one. Um, and then we'll show you the curve menu here in just a second. So as I mentioned a little bit ago, uh, all designs start off with a curve. So if I wanted to create, say, a pendant that looked something like that, I could go in and draw that shape. Um, you'll see my zoom tool up here, by the way. Uh, that was added into version 12. Our customers were asking that we um, are able to get closer in when we're trying to maybe duplicate something or we're trying to uh, run an outline of an existing piece. Um, so we put that zoom window in. You can place that anywhere you want on the screen. Uh, I just have mine defaulted to the upper right corner. Uh, and then another way that you can draw different um, curves and cross sections here is with a symmetrical tool. So if I wanted to make a ring and I want it to look like a, like a cat head, top of a cat head, I could just simply go out there and draw those curves. And I could now connect this with this and it would make a surface. So real easy and also real easy if I want to come back in here, I want to edit this in any particular fashion, I can do so. And if it's connected to a design, it'll automatically update that design as well. So I'll go ahead and jump out of the curve menu here. I'm going to leave these out here, but I'll just introduce you to another tool. Um, I'm going to hide these over here. So they're just going to hang out um, underneath my little sketch library here. So let's build a piece of jewelry, okay? So I'm gonna build a simple ring today, maybe do a channel, maybe some bead setting, maybe a combination thereof. We'll see as I get into it, what I'm feeling like. Um, but as I mentioned, jewelry specific, so allows you to think like a jeweler. So when I click on my jewelry tools button here, here's all my different ring builders. So I've got just a standard ring rail, I can do a bypass piece of jewelry. Um, I can do a cathedral piece, signet ring builders. Um, I can take any shape that I want and create it into a ring. So if I have, let's say, a flower or a petal or something like that, and I want it to be uh, become a ring, I can run it through there. Um, the tool that I use most, the three tools I use most of the time is going to be this one here, which is our, our ring wizard, which allows me to put multiple shapes out onto the onto the design. I use this one right here quite a bit and let's just bring that one open for you. So what you can see here is that um, we have a lot of different areas um, around the world that you can choose whatever finger size you're from. And then we also have uh, a customized ring sizing as well. So maybe there's something that um, um, you're working in that's not standard size, you want to work outside of our normal sizes, you can create your own as well. Since we're in the US, I'll go ahead and use the US sizes. Um, I can go anywhere from a zero all the way up to a size 16 and quarter steps. So if I scroll down and let's go to the, the standard like size seven, I just click on that and it's going to automatically update that. You'll see up here at the top, there's this little orientation plane. If I was to bring in a stone, it would drop the girdle right on that particular plane. And I can move this up and down according to whatever size I want to work with, uh, things like that, okay? I can swipe and type too. So if I know the depth of my stone and I wanted a specific millimeter size off of the bottom, I can type it there as well, okay? I'll just go ahead and hit the check mark. Um, and while we're talking about the stones, let's just go ahead and bring one out. So here's our stone library. So we've got our standard, uh, size stones. Um, you can also go in and you can create your own gemstone. So let's say you're working with an opal or a piece of agate or something that 
um, you know, it doesn't have a standard shape, you can go in and create those with our builders. But we'll go ahead and just select this right here. Um, it defaults to a half carat round diamond. Um, up here, I can change any of the colors that I want. So we have all the different um, precious, non-precious, and then, like I said, agates and that sort of thing are in here as well. So I can work with pearls, uh, just different types of polish, gemstones, semi-polish, semi precious um, plastics, marbles, leathers, whatever else you want to do. You just simply click on one of the colors and it'll go out there and change. I'll go ahead and leave it a diamond. Down across here, um, we have our different other ways that we can work. The, the basic library piece that comes out is going to be an ideal cut stone, but maybe you're working with a, a stone that's not ideal cut. You can go in and put in your measurements here. We can also work with colored gemstones. Um, princess cuts and baguettes get their own little world because they have a lot of nuances to them. Um, of course, cabochons and then uh, your brillettes if you want to work in that fashion as well. I'll just go ahead and leave this um, leave this around brilliant cut here. Okay, and I'll hit the check mark. And you can see back with our rendering software, you can see that it looks like a real diamond. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I like to use um, I like to use this button right here um, for my next part of this, and this allows me to do a couple of different things. One is I get the dimensions at the top, middle, and bottom. Um, so I could also import in a sketch. We do have a, a unique product in here where I can do a three-dimensional sketch, top, side view, and and uh, looking down, and I can bring it in, and it'll actually fold that image up into a box so that I can utilize more of an artistic way of designing it as well. Uh, for today, I'm just going to make this real straightforward. I'm going to make it uh, 1.5 millimeters at the top and 1.5 in the middle. And then we'll go ahead and make it 1.5 at the bottom. And I don't want to taper into this. So I'm just going to put that at zero. And so this helps me to make sure that I'm totally flat if I want to look at it. I can also click on this next button and it'll flip it around. So Again, I can either have a sketch up here and I can line these arrows up by moving this in and out, or I can simply just swipe and type the dimensions that I want. Let's make it five by three by two as an example. Okay. The last part of this is I need to give it some sort of dimension. So if I click on this very last button, you'll notice that I have the opportunity of either grabbing the, that curve that I drew over here earlier, or I can simply go to a library. And by going to the library, I have all different types of shapes in here. We've got different prongs, uh, wires. There's my shank shapes, signet, top, middle, and bottom. We've got chains, um, earring parts, necklace bales, different types of findings. We do have a, a stagnant group of regular shanks in here, something that you might use every day, like a peg head, um, solitaire or something like that. These are do not have history built into them, but you could just go in and 3D scale them as needed. But of course, the power of why you get into your own CAD software is to create your own items. So the more models that you create, you can save those into your own libraries and have that full three-dimensional um, opportunity or that uh, parametric opportunity when you come back. So you'll notice a couple of these have different, two of the same shape. One has a C, that just means that we've taken the time and comfort fit that for you. So I'm just gonna do something real basic, like a half round, so I just double click on that. I can preview it if I wanna kinda of see what's going on out there. I'll just hit the check mark, and there it is. But just like before, you know, if I wanna change the metal color on this or something like that, um, I can easily come back into my builder, come back over here to my library, and right here's my precious metals. Let's go uh, 18 karat. And let's make it, uh, I don't know, just standard white gold polished, I guess. We'll go ahead and hit the update on that. Now we've got a white gold piece out there. Okay, so um, now I want to go in and create a, a bezel around this. I told you I was going to keep it real simple today. So I'll just click on my stone and I come back over here to my um, jewelry tools and the idea is, is that again I'm I can think in the way that I'm usually think I've I come from a retail background I've created jewelry I've been around the jewelry market a long time and there's times I might want to go out and draw my own shape and make the bezel out of that 
But if I'm just doing something real simple, I can just come down here. Here's all of our head builders. There's our bezel builder, different types of cutters, uh, honeycomb if you're doing like a pave sort of a piece, uh, make an eternity band, basic solitaire builder, all live right there. So I'll just go ahead and select that piece right there. And I'm just going to move this down just a little bit. Um, all I really care about is as kind of going down through the bottom there. And then, of course, you can control your, your uh, length. You can control the taper. But let's say I'm going to um, use a 40-degree cutter uh, burr in here to cut my seat. I can just come down here to the, to the seat angle, type in 40, and it'll automatically update that for me as well. Do you want it rounded at the top? Do you want it you know, flat at the top? Do you want it more just subtly rounded? You can choose those um, different pieces up here as well. And again, once I hit the green button, uh, we've got it locked in and uh, we're ready to go. Okay, so now I'm going to start to put these things, two things together. If I select this piece and this piece, this is a standard CAD command. If I go over here to my solids um, and I scroll down here, Right here is going to be a Boolean operation, and a Boolean is a fancy word for either gluing something together, cutting something apart, or leaving the center of something. It's a mathematical term. Me, I just say you're, I'm gluing it together. So I'm going to take this piece and this piece, and I'm going to glue them together, and I just hit the plus sign, and now I've got one solid piece. And then the last thing I'm going to do here, since we're hanging out, uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply a cutter to this. And just like everything else I've been doing before, I can determine, you know, how far up and down this goes. Again, if I know I'm going to use a 40 degree burr, I can just type in 40 and it'll go ahead and, and make that adjustment there for me as well. So just to finish this up real quick, I'll just go ahead and cut this, this cutter out of the, the other piece there. And this time I'm going to do a subtraction or a difference. And I just hit that button. And there it is. You can see what's going on in there. Um, if I right click on my any object that I have, this is a new thing that we added in as well. So this is, we call it the Iris 360. And what it does is it brings up the tools that you can work with this plus the history that I've been working on over here. Another thing it can do is I can enable whether I want the bright shiny rendering or if I just want it more dull. And I can also turn on the lines and the curves so I can see where the curves have been drawn, drawn through here. Um, here's my hide, freeze, and show. I can also do that by hitting the space bar on my, um, on my keyboard as well. So this is something new. Um, this was asked for by um, our clientele base. They wanted to have a little bit faster way of getting to the tools um, or handing tools that you might use with this. And so the programmers went ahead and and built that in and, and made it all work. So there's your colors and retopology and all that fun stuff. Um, however you wanna do it, you can do it. All right, so now um, this is all done. The parametrics is all set up on it. Uh, I'm gonna reset this window. I haven't talked to you about this yet. This is our little compass. So if I just wanna flip things around, you know, to look at it from different angles and stuff like that, I can do that just by clicking on these different things. Um, I zoom in and out a lot and so a lot of times I'll end up with my design like way over here it's also a quick way to get it back into the center so just a, a, a little quick thing and again you can place this anywhere you want it to go so back to the history tree everything I've been doing over here keeps adding to here well let's say the customer walks in and they say you know what I, I like overall I like that um, but we found out that their finger size was not a seven um, their finger size was actually um, a five and a half. And so I can quickly come in here and make that adjustment by selecting a five and a half, hitting the check mark, hitting the little red button, and it automatically updates to make that a size five and a half. Going up in size is easy to resize a ring in CAD. Um, most softwares will tell you where it will allow it to distort. Going down in size is a more it's a more complex process because 
um, you don't want it to distort. So we actually rebuild that whole model behind the scenes and pass it back out to the software. So if I was to make a duplicate, duplicate of this at size seven, size five, size four, size three, everything would remain the same except for that finger hole, okay? But we also learned that our customer wants this a little bit narrower. So we're gonna come back over here um, into the, the viewport here. And again, I can either just start to move these and get it somewhere close to where I want it to be. So let's make it, we'll kind of use the artistic way here. Let's make it 3.5 by 2.5 by two. I hit the check mark. Everything in red is gonna repopulate and now it's narrower. I can make any change I want to this on the fly and not have any issues um, with it updating. I'm going to save this real quick just because in case I make a mistake, I want to bring it back out. Um, so we'll just go ahead and make a quick save of that. All right, so let's show you a few other things, okay? So let's lay some stones down the side here. Um, let's show you some different um, other techniques that we can do. Um, and show you really, again, the real power of parametric modeling. Um, I mentioned a couple times that 3Design is a true parametric modeler. It's not a plugin. So a lot of different software packages out there that have parametrics. What they do is they utilize other software packages to allow those parametrics to happen. It's not that it's right or wrong. It's just when you have something that's written native inside of your software, you tend to have better luck when you get into more complex models of that uh, history keeping up with what it is that you're doing. So um, just different ways to look at how history works. All right, so I wanna pull a curve out of here because I'm gonna lay some stones down there. Um, I didn't talk about this. This is kind of my, my favorites tools up here. So you'll see a couple of the things I've been working with. Um, move, scale, and rotate, I use that one a lot. But I'm just gonna grab uh, I'm going to grab a curve and it's going to ask me where I want it to be pulled from and I'm going to tell it I want it to be pulled from this area right here so I'm going to hit this and then when I click on whoops just a second so what it'll do is it allows me to go out here and I can again I can select whichever curve I want um, making the adjustments to it however I want but the idea is is that just being able to come out and select that, that section right there. And then what I can do is it'll default right down the center. Well, let's say I want to put some mill grain on this. I've got a whole mill grain tool or a, a rope tool that I could work with. I could pull this out to the edge. Um, maybe there's something else I want to do, uh, hard telling. But the deal is, is that a lot of things, as I talked about earlier, start off with just a basic curve. I can decide if it's running this way or if it's running across. So I might wanna put, say, a little collar up here and then lay some stones out in that collar. That curve is what's gonna dictate that. But we'll just go back to running it this way. So I go ahead and hit the check mark and there's my curve. Okay, so next step is I wanna lay some stones out on here. So we're gonna come over here to our jewelry tools. Um, I talked to you about the heads and bezels and stuff. Um, up here is gonna be our pave builders. Um, we're going to be able to run a variable channel. We can do baguettes, we can do clusters, uh, wire clusters, uh, advanced pave. We can do different sizes of stones if we want to lay it out that way. I'm going to use a variable channel. And the first thing it's going to ask for is where do I want those to go? And I want them to go right there. Okay. And you'll see that um, they're tucked down inside of there. That's because I've got it set up that way. Um, that it's going to work off of the table of the stone. The margin, this allows me to adjust where you, the, the tops and bottoms of this are going to start. So if I'm going to bead set this or channel set this as an example, I might want to push that out a little ways away from there um, to get it where I want it to be. And then I can adjust the spacing between the stones as well. Okay. If I click on this next button over, this is going to allow me to choose the size that I want. So let's go ahead and make these two pointers. And I'm also gonna lift those stones up and out of that ring because I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna bead set them. I just made that decision a couple minutes ago. So we're just gonna get them up and out of there just a little bit. And 
just like before, I can control how many stones are going down and around here as well. You can never have enough stones. Um, this will give you a, a, a exclamation point, letting you know that you've gone beyond the end of your line. It doesn't matter because it's only going to work it down to there as well. But what's nice is if I take this from a uh, you know, from the size five and a half and I take it up to a size 16, I might need more of those stones. And the idea is this builder will allow you to, to do that, okay? And I got that lifted up and out of there like that. Um, if I did want to do a channel, I could go ahead and create that channel. Um, I could do a French cut on this. Uh, some people, you know, whale tail cutting, whatever else I want to put on this, I can make that happen as well. What's nice about the way that this builder works is that I can do multiple setting styles with this one builder. So I'm gonna set it up for bead set, but let's say the next customer comes in and they like that, but they saw where the, the stones were down inside of this little area with the prongs. Well, I can just come back to this builder, push the prongs down or push the stones down, run the channel builder on it. Now I've got another setting style. Um, but for today, we'll just go ahead and leave that, leave that off. Once you get those done, you just hit the check mark and it, it just puts a little circle out here. It's it's a holding holding place. But I do need to tell it what it is I want to put in there. And again, this is going to default to a round stone, but just because these circles are round doesn't mean I can't put a princess cut in there. Uh, you know, anything else, princess cut, emerald cut, uh, baguettes, ovals, whatever else you want to add into there. I just need need to tell it I want something in there. The other thing I need to bring out right now is a prong. And so I'll just come out here and draw just a, a real basic prong for now. And we'll go ahead and uh, just for fun, I'm just gonna move this down a little bit and let's just make it a little shorter while we're hanging out here too. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the check mark on that. And now we're ready to put, start putting stones into this design, okay? So how do I do it? Well, I'm gonna select my variable channel because I'm gonna tell that that that's what I'm gonna work with. And then I'm gonna come over here to this little button. And this little button is what we call a jeweling button. And just because I'm, it, it says jeweling doesn't mean it has to be a stone. It can be, again, anything you want it to be. But as soon as I click on that, you'll see that it filled in those stones for me. I'm gonna grab my prong and I'm gonna center this prong um, out of the gate here. Um, and then what am I going to do? Ah, that's good enough. We'll just leave it for right there. Actually, I'm going to round the top of this. Make it a little bit prettier. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my variable channel again, because that's my target. But I'm going to come down here to the prongs. And right here's the prong where I built. There's my channel prongs, my pave prongs. There's my micro setting that I talked about. Um, Presetting. There's a rope builder and a mill grain builder. I'm going to do this one. It's asking me, what do I want to put on there? I want to put on my prongs. And I've now applied my prongs out there. So if your prongs are a little too tall, you know, I mean, there's that wouldn't bother me because I have to come back in and set it. But if your customer's like, why are they so big? You can just come back over here. You can select your. Um, your uh, height or whatever you want to do and we hit update and now they're a little bit shorter okay so anything you want to do this um, at this particular point I'm also going to flip these over to the other side and this is just a standard CAD command and you might say well could you do them at the same time and the answer is yes you could do them at the same time um, I'm just in a habit that I like to do them independently because when I do them together, I'll group these. And if I want to go in and do something different to one side to the other, I just have to ungroup them. So I just do it out of the gate. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do here, we'll go ahead and put some nice cutters on here. Uh, so just like you've seen before, I can control, you know, the size of them. I can control the, the girdle angle if I want to, the seat angle, how big these are how far up and down they come. If I want the bottom coming through here, if I want it to be a heart, moon, star, and clover, I could change the shape of these cutters. Um, I can make them any shape that you want. Um, so you got total control over that. And then I'll just mirror these over to the other side as well. And now we're gonna start 
cutting these things apart. Okay, so you saw me do this before. This is a Boolean feature. So one of the things I think you probably have picked up on by now is um, a lot of times I'm doing the same commands. I'm just doing it in a different different pattern. So it's nice because it's like anything else in our lives. You know, 80% of the time we're going to use 20% of the tools, the old 80-20 rule. Um, and the same thing is going on here. Building this simple piece of jewelry, I've used arguably the same, you know, tools over and over. All right, so there's our stones. We got them. We've got everything cut out up here. If you want to take a look at that, I can zoom in on that for you. Uh, so you can check that out. Um, customer likes the width, but mom got involved and uh, boyfriend got involved and grandma got involved and they would like to see a few more stones going down the side of this. So if I come back to my variable channel and I double click on that and I come back over here to my number of stones, I can just start to increase this number, hit the check mark, hit the populate, and it's added those stones. And it's not only done that, but it's added the cutters and the prongs to it as well. So no matter what you've done, um, you can always come back in and make adjustments to it. And you're gonna find that as you create your own line of jewelry, um, you're going to find that uh, a lot of this, uh, you know, the way that you approach the design is going to be very similar. Uh, we talk about CAD software being easy to learn. Um, my line is there's no CAD software that's easy to learn. Uh, it all takes time and effort from you to be able to go in and, and put your time into it and practice and take the classes and ask the questions. But once you understand the core of it, um, you can do a lot of different things um, and build any type of pe pieces of jewelry that you want very, very rapidly. Okay, so let's just, uh, I'll show you a few other tools here. So we have different builders in here as well. If you want to build your own uh, bale, bangle, charms, um, there's trim to finger size. So if I want to cut that bezel out real quick, I can, I can do that. Um, scooping so if i want to hollow out the inside of this piece of jewelry i could go in and, and do that by hollowing it uh, those sorts of things um, i do have the ability to um, i came from a background of of a couple different softwares that i've used in my life and one of the hardest things i found with switching from brand to brand was i knew what these tools did i just didn't necessarily know where to find them so we did put in a, a search tool so if I want to come in and you know find out how to fill it something or trim something it'll bring up those commands by there I can also search um, I can also search my my um, different tools over here so let's come over here real quick and I just want to show you this if I want to come back out here and I want to choose a curve remember I had that um, curve up here that I drew This one right here, I can select this. This isn't going to be pretty, but you're going to be able to get the idea. And I can take that curve that I drew and I can transform it over here. So if I want to come back in here now and and uh, make an adjustment to that curve in any uh, fashion, um, I can simply come out here make those adjustments to it. And that is one funky looking uh, bezel, but what do they say? It's so weird it might sell. <laughs> so anything I want to do to that curve, like I said, I can come in here and modify it if I want to, um, make adjustments if I want to, uh, get rid of it if I want to, <laughs> whatever else it is that you want to do. You can do it on the fly and create whatever it is that you want to create. Okay. Um, like I said, so ugly it'll sell. Um, <laughs> so if I want to adjust this, just as an example, um, I might come down here and say, okay, I want you to come up this way and I want you to come down this way. And I'll hit the check mark and I'll update it again. And now it's taken a lot of that little slumpy area out of there. Um, maybe I want to bring it in this way. 
okay? So you can see any part of this that you want can be done uh, any way that you want to. So just a quick little thing here too. Um, now that we're done, I do have the capacity to come in here. I, um, I can choose, uh, I can figure out the weight of this model. Um, I can figure out the total weight of the stones. I can go in and color co coordinate the stones. So let's say um, I've got a big pave plate out here and I'm using everything from uh, one pointer to a one and three quarter pointers. The jeweler needs to know where those are. I can go out and select those stones by size and then change colors on them and put the size on them. So that speeds up the, the setting on the back side for the for the jewelers as well so there's plenty of ways that cad can help you outside of just making a pretty picture okay um over here on the uh, left hand side uh, again this is uh the the some of the new stuff that we put into here um I whoops i wouldn't go so fast There we go. 3D viewer settings. Um, this is new as well. Uh, because of the new rendering software in here, we do write not only natively for Windows, but we also write natively for Macintosh. So any of the ARMS chips that are out today, the M1, M2, and M3, we do run natively inside of those software packages. Um, what does that mean? That means if you're going out to buy a new computer, you don't need to buy a high-end NVIDIA card. Um, and, and adding more money to NVIDIA's pocket. Um, this will run off pretty much any video card, either onboard video card or external video card that you want. I do have a NVIDIA RTX 2000 because it knows it's there, it will pick up on that and make it work with my rendering software. Down here, you can determine um, your light intensity. So if you don't want it to be quite so shiny or you want it to be shinier, you can simply adjust that. The reflection quality, you can do a low, medium, or a high. Um, I, I like low. I don't like to see a lot of um, uh, craziness going on, especially inside of the stones. You can uh, enable different things here. So you'll notice uh, when I come out and try to select something, see those boxes come up around there? That in, helps me to indicate what it is that I'm selecting. Okay, so I'm not like, I want the stones. See, I can see that I'm grabbing the prongs there. These are little things that we added in. And then the other thing we added in, and you can do this on your own as well, but we have different cube maps in here. So if there's a certain type of reflection that you want, you can go out and select it. Um, if you look at this one, this is inside of a greenhouse or something is the one that I use. So little little things there that you can uh, enhance your, your looks with. And then if I just simply want to do a, a, a render, um, I can come out here and I can say uh, screenshot to a file and it'll ask me where I want it to go. I want it to go uh, be window size. Um, I don't want the UI captured in it. So as soon as I do that, I can hit save and this will automatically save this to my file and I can go open it up and render it. I can also render this out as high as I want to go with the rendering. So if you do want it 3000 by 3000 you know dpi because you're going to do a big marketing campaign you know we can make that happen and then the last thing i'll show you here is we do have the ability to create um, an animation and this is real straightforward as well you choose um, how many uh, steps you want all those fun things um, i could preview it if i wanted to let's take the blue off of there so you can actually see it um, and I can save it and I can save this at any resolution that I want as well. So, you know, it's at 1600 by 1200. Now I can take it up as high or as low as I wanted to. Of course, the higher you get, the longer it's going to take. Um, so that is three design 101. Um, as you can see, I, I made some pretty fun stuff. Um, I think not necessarily best bezel I've ever built but I can keep tweaking it yeah that's better um, as far as you know uh, we do offer training for the program we have technical support packages that are available of course Novedge uh, came on board with us uh, earlier this year uh, they've been a great partner with us and um, 
you saw uh, a website there that you can go out and order it directly from them. They do have financing available if that's an option for you or you, you want that to be an option for you, uh, different ways that you can buy that. Um, with that said, is there any questions that anybody has? I'm looking, uh, um, no questions so far, but this would be a perfect time because you have dug all to yourselves. So I'm going to wait a few seconds to see if somebody types anything. Um, I also want to thank you, Doug, because this was um, just very nice. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, and I know you, yeah, I mean, you've done this for over 30 years, but you make it look so easy. <laughs> and uh, i'm sure um the program helps a lot and it most uh, certainly does um, yeah i i you know growing up in the industry um i couldn't draw and so for me without some form of cad software i had a hard time communicating design not only to my clients but also to my jewelers you know just i have a rough sketch and i'd take it to them and they'd be like what is this so I just changed those out to emerald cuts, by the way. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times they look at me and be like, I, I don't know what you want, you know? Um, <laughs> but being able to view it inside of a CAD software package like this um, made it super easy for me to, to communicate. And again, not only to, you know, my customers, but also to, you know, my, my jewelers. Because um, if they don't know how to make it, um, we're all just standing there staring at each other, right? So um, just being able to make quick adjustments on the fly, being able to create things on the fly, um, starting off with a, 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 a curve, you know, a, I would say, you know, you can start off with a straight line and end up with something totally twisted and, and bent around if that's what you want to do. Um, so it just makes it convenient, I guess would be the way to say it. Yeah, these, these to... renderings are worth a thousand drawings oh, they're beautiful, they? yeah. yeah just yeah just you know like i said the rapid ability to go in and make it adjustments to this thing and and making it look like a finished piece of jewelry there's no confusion you know going on I mean, between you exactly. and your customers you know what you're um, getting there's yeah, you know the mm -hmm. other thing with cad too and a, a customer of mine years ago told me this and i told him if i said that to jewelers they'd beat me but um he he was 100 percent right you're only as good as your best jeweler and what that means is is when i was managing retail stores we had a great hand fabricator we had a great wax carver we had a great finished jeweler the problem was at some point the designs would reach their limitations on what they were comfortable with and so we either had to find somebody that could do it or we had to turn the job away what cad allows you to do is to push your own envelope um, and how you want to do design. So when you get to the end of your comfort level, if you're carving waxes or if you do hand fabrication or whatever it is, CAD can allow you to take it beyond that. And as long as you know the mechanics of the jewelry, how it's built, the limitations of the stones and the, the metals, you can create anything that you want. And, and that's really been the beauty. You're seeing a lot of AI stuff out there right now. Um, being able to go out put in your search window into AI and have it come up with jewelry, you know, that's beautiful, but you still have to be able to make that. So having yeah. CAD and being able to make it in the CAD software and then sending it off to your printers, your milling machines, or your, to your service bureaus to have it manufactured, you know, you're still controlling the whole design process. Yeah. So that's- And AI key. doesn't go that far for now. It, it doesn't, you know, and the Thank automotive God. industry Thank is- God yeah, for that. Yeah, the automotive industry has wanted the ability to take a 2D image and turn it to a 3D image forever. And it's today, it's not possible. Will it be someday? Maybe, but not not today. Time will tell. Yeah, time will tell. <laughs> time um, will tell. Yeah, we so, do have a question actually. Okay. Um, Karen is asking, how do I upgrade from B11 to version 12? And um, I mean, I can tell you that on our catalog, there's a select there's the option to uh, select the upgrade and um, you just type 3D Design Pro Upgrades, for instance, and they'll take you to the um, upgrade that you can purchase directly from us, or you can call us um, and um, you know be guided by our um, sales representatives that are always on the phone and they're not 
they're not AI, they're real living people, <laughs> human beings. Can you believe that? That's so, a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But yeah, once uh, the upgrade process, once uh, if you purchase it, when you purchase it through Noved's website, um, they get in touch with us and then uh, 3Design is still ran off of a dongle. So many CAD softwares have gone to cloud uh, security, but we have maintained with a physical dongle. Um, the reason why is uh, with a physical dongle, you don't have to have an internet connection to work. And uh, one of the biggest complaints I've heard from other software packages is if I don't have the internet, I can't start the program. Um, and you know people do go places with no internet so you can use ours anywhere but once we get the upgrade order what we do is uh just upgrade you your dongle. The dongle right yep we just yep. update the dongle send you a link to download it and you're off and running yep yep so um, check us out give us the call and we'll set you up with the upgrade um if there's another no question i want to show everybody again uh where to get 3d design pro just go to novage.com and you know, search your um, 3D design of choice. There's, uh, you know, pro designers, boutique, uh, you name it. And um, you know, why Novage? Because Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software. We have all the choices and the freedom to mix and match. The advice always there. Um, real people on the phone, and um, you know, just great service all uh, around thank you so much doug um that was really enjoyable today i love when we have jewelry webinar um but that's just me <laughs> and it's always pleasing to the eyes and especially with your rendering that's um, just gorgeous and um looking forward to more webinar with you guys and um just check it you know call us anytime or email us um, for any information, we're always available. Mm -hmm.